Welcome to the Growth Lab Podcast, where we talk about finding new clients, winning more contracts, and growing successful cleaning businesses. I'm your host, Matt Harris, and I run the Growth Lab. We partner with cleaning business owners to launch, accelerate, and scale the growth of their business with tried and tested systems and strategies that generate predictable revenue. If you're turning over at least six figures and you want to grow your cleaning business to seven figures plus, click on the link in the description and schedule a call. Now let's dive in. Hi, I'm just going to have a quick little insert about sales. So whereas Ashley and David have been talking about more sort of inbound type activity, my focus with the Growth Lab is is outbound. So we focus on things like uh, cold calls, cold emails, and LinkedIn outreach. Now, when I started my cleaning business, I, I, I did very little inbound. I'll be perfectly honest. I had a website. I got one inquiry, I think, in the first three years of getting my website set up. So I, I solely relied on making phone calls and sending emails. Inbound is Google pay-per-click and things like that, Matt, just to confirm that's but paying for ads. And outbound is can I chase Yeah, that? so inbound is, so as David was saying, obviously a website, you want to try and uh, generate leads through your website, which leads into having decent SEO, as Ashley was saying, pay, paid ads. So whether it's Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, like all of that kind of stuff, driving eyeballs to a landing page, to your website, to somewhere where you can capture email addresses, contact details to then be able to follow up. Because as I think Ashley explained, when you have inbound inquiries, it's people searching for your service. So it's intent based, which means that they're they're pretty much good to go. They're looking for a a plumber or a cleaning, a carpet cleaner or a property maintenance guy, handyman, whatever the case may be. With outbound, you're you're pretty much interrupting people's day, right? They're not expecting a call from you, which means that you need to be a lot more persistent. There's a lot more effort that goes into into outbound. And I think one of the keys that I've I've sort of learned is is really important. Whereas with inbound, you're going to get inquiries from anyone and everyone, and then you need to filter through those inquiries to find the right one that that fits for your business. I appreciate when you start, um, you pretty much take anything and everything, and as you grow, you start getting a bit more particular about the type of work that you want to take on. Um, with outbound, you can be really a bit more targeted. And um, one of the keys is really identifying a niche. So having like an ideal client profile, who do you want to go after? Is it so when I had my cleaning business, I started off with tenancy clean. So I was looking for estate agents in Northwest London that were managing at least 100 plus properties. Now, to get the granular detail was a little bit difficult but I kind of knew the type of business that I wanted to go after. Then it was just a case of, okay, how do I make those lists? I can go on Google. My my process has evolved since then. There's different platforms where you can access email addresses and contact details to generate your lists. So once you know the market you're going after, you've identified your niche, you know, yes, you might be a cleaning business, but do you offer office cleaning for startup businesses or do you offer office cleaning for medical businesses or or something particular rather than just saying oh I, I clean any sort of office because and I think David and Ashley will agree to a certain extent if you are more focused on the type of clients the type of market that you want to target it's much easier to then attract the right sort of leads for your business so once you've got an ideal client profile then it is a case of taking the right sort of approach when I originally started, I just picked up the phone. Like I, I wasn't sure what I was going to say until the the receiver was picked up at the other end. But now it's it's a little bit more of a tailored approach. People aren't expecting your call if you're cold calling. So to lead into a big sort of monologue about how you're the best cleaning or handyman business in your local area is is going to put them off. The intention on that first call is you know, I understand that you're this type of business. This is the sort of business that we serve. I understand that this is your biggest problem. So when I was approaching estate agents, for example, I said, look, I know that uh, one of the biggest problems is deposit disputes. So we will help reduce your uh, deposit dispute claims, which means spending less time dealing with tenants, which means that it's quicker turnaround. There's better productivity because you can spend time doing other stuff. Uh, and it's really dropping something like that into the first call that you have with them and then getting on getting them onto 
a follow up call where you can have a bit more of a meaningful conversation and find out more about their business, what their problems are, and how you're best positioned to serve them. So once you have that sort of process in place, then it's much easier to to start approaching prospective clients. You can tailor your email campaigns as well to sort of focus in on the right sort of messaging for the type of businesses that you want to target. And really, I think we just focus on outbound. So to give you a couple of current examples, I'm working with a waste management business. They solely rely on inbound. So they've got a great, really interactive website and they're ranked highly on SEO. They've got um, great reviews, great testimonials. In terms of uh, Google ranking criteria, they're right up there. So they get floods of inbound inquiries, but they're trying to build out their, their commercial division. And really, commercial businesses, yes, they will search on Google, but the reality is they're probably working with an existing business already. So we're building out a sort of sales process for them to contact commercial businesses on the regular. They've identified three or four markets that they want to go after, property management, they want to go after FM, construction, light construction, and other waste brokers. So it's much easier then to to sort of implement a process. I think we've built out a five-stage process where we have an initial email, we get them onto a call, then we arrange a trial collection, we arrange a follow-up call, and then we get to the point of setting up an account. Now, that one of uh, the biggest, I guess, downfalls I see, in particular with cleaning businesses, because they're the type of businesses that I speak with the most, is a lot of them rely on inbound marketing, right? So referrals, networking, the odd uh, website inquiry, social media, which is great. That shouldn't be discounted, but you need to put a little bit of effort into outbound as well, because Yes, it might take a little bit longer to get results, but there's you can build up a much more targeted approach to get to get the type of clients that that you want. Um, basically, so, basically, write down or something, figure out your ideal client, mm-hmm. where you make the most money. Write it down, then go online and find them, send them emails, maybe yeah. like five emails, one of, one every four weeks, uh, phone calls and stuff like that. Chase them. That's yeah, there's a process. Uh, there's Just a process. Follow that process. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it's knowing who your ideal client is, knowing the market that you're targeting, then figuring out your approach. You need to have a sales process. And, and I think all of the speakers have mentioned about systems. And it's important to, to have a system that you can you can rely on, right? So it does mean utilizing the right sort of tech and then getting your list built. So making sure that you get the right contacts and you don't want just general email addresses because they're going to go nowhere. You need to know the people who are the decision makers at the clients that you're targeting. So for us as a a cleaning business going after estate agents, we needed to speak with property managers, ideally the head of property management because they're the decision makers to the suppliers that they want to attract or use. So really having that sort of four or five stage, four or five steps that you need to build out your outbound process. And look, no one likes cold calling. To be perfectly honest, I don't like cold calling. But if you have a system in place, then it really increases your your chances of being successful on the call and moving people along your process to then be able to close more business. That's the key. Now, yep, sounds good, mate. So don't just rely on like paid ads and people coming to you chase them as well so you've got yeah. different ways of getting clients yeah yeah have a get yourself out there get yourself known that's it you got you got to go out there man i think where when you when you have a system you have a follow up process as well you you there's less of a chance of contacts falling through the cracks if you don't have a system you'll email people once you'll call people once you'll forget about them and potentially you're leaving money on the table the other thing you have to take into account is with outbound, they're not necessarily going to say yes on your first point of contact. In particular, with with any type of long-term contractual work, they will start to look for new suppliers, whether it's cleaning, maintenance, whatever it is, within the last sort of three to six months of the contract, depending on the size and length of the term. So if you're being persistent in contacting them, 
uh, and then being able to figure out, look, when is your contract up for, for renewal? Can I reach out closer to the time? Can we have more of a conversation then so that I can be considered for uh, the renewal process? That That is the important bit. So the consistency is key. Yes, you're probably, you are going to have a higher, not necessarily conversion rate, but a higher inquiry rate with inbound. I would argue that with outbound, even though the the inquiry rate is lower, the opportunity, the potential value of the business that you're going to gain is going to be greater because you're super focused on on the type of business you want to win. That's how you grew your business. You didn't do any paid ads. It was just basically no, you was... built a system that sends automated emails to your potential clients. You would follow up with a, with a few phone calls and that's how you got the leads. So anybody that's starting a business, do you think, would you recommend doing that if you've not got the funds to yeah. advertise in Google? Just do cold calling and set up an email campaign with a CRM mm. system? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it will cost... You can probably set up a campaign at zero cost. You can use MailChimp, you can use MailerLite, you can use HubSpot, something like that, where your first 500 or 1,000 contacts are free. You can set up sequences through that. And I think that would be a really low cost. There's still a, there's still a cost. There's a time investment, right? Because you're going to have to make the calls. You need to go through the follow-up process. That's but what you can use Upwork for, like, or a virtual assistant. Get yeah, yeah, you can do that. For £22. An hour, two hours, like, see a full hour just doing cold calling. You, you could get so many calls out. Get a virtual yeah. assistant every Tuesday and Thursday, for instance, an hour a day to yeah. just do cold calls for you while you've got your emails automated. Yeah, you can. There's, You, you could probably do it for even less. You, if you go abroad, you can pay $5, $10 an hour for people to build lists for you, for people to do the calling. So there's there's a lot of different ways that you can approach this. But if you're starting from scratch or you're still early in your business, then the upfront investment of sorting out a sales process, identifying the type of clients that you want to go after, and then just putting in the graph to kind of to execute and, and learn along the way, because you're not going to be perfect on the first go. It, it took me quite a few years to kind of figure out the right way to do it. Darren, you've got you've got a question. Do you want to hit me up? Yeah, so see, right, regarding that, right, was in, like, um, I wrote it down because I knew I'd forget. Uh, like, see, like, when you've got no money at the, be- at the beginning, yeah. and you were saying about, like, sending out emails, and cold calling, yeah. how do you get all these numbers and emails to start off with? That's kind of my wee struggle. I'm trying to kind of kick off, like, a property business and come away for plumbing. I'm yeah. full-time employment with somebody else, but I like my way for that. But I've not got the cash just to plow into, like, ads and stuff like that right away. Yeah, but just to find out how to get like all these different emails because my social media is not big and stuff like that. Um, it's just thinking I find the use for that. I mean, for for outbound, really, social media is as you start is it's not relevant. You can use Google. So if you know, the key is look the the key starting point is knowing the type of business that you want to go after. Yeah, because once that, then your your Google search can be a lot more focused. If you're going after property management businesses, and I'll I'll repeat the example, you can search property management businesses, letting businesses in your local area, get the search results. Then on the website, uh, sometimes they will have uh, contact details for uh, individuals in the office. If they don't, then what I would suggest for everyone is to have a LinkedIn profile because if you're going to be business to business, you, you need to be on LinkedIn Facebook is is great. Um, if, from my perspective, Facebook is more for for sort of the end consumer. But if you're looking to target businesses, you need to be on LinkedIn. And there's tools that you can use to kind of once you've found um, LinkedIn profiles to get the email addresses and the phone numbers. And that, like, I'm more than happy. You know, I'm going to be sharing content in the community about this. So there'll there'll be guides and videos that you can uh, you can watch and you can read to to help you do this because the i appreciate when you don't know you don't know right but if you're showing how to how to catch the fish then it it, it becomes much easier and it, it's really honestly it's not that difficult like once you've once you kind of know what tools you need to use then the next step step is figuring out the right approach do i call first do i email first yeah you know, how many emails do i need to send how how long do i leave it to call and that that's just a case of trial and error 
So to go back to you, if you're starting with zero cost, with zero funds, there's there's a bunch of tools and resources, all free, that you can use to build your list and to send out emails. Obviously, the calling is going to cost you the phone bill, but also to to get a, a CRM set up and like a, a client relationship management system where you can capture communications that you have with clients. That's super key as well. Um, you can do all of that at next to no cost. Thanks to you guys for listening to the Growth Lab podcast. You can access the show notes and free resources via the link in the episode description. And if you got some value from this podcast, please pay it forward and share it with others across social media or leave a rating and review on whatever podcast platform you listen to because it would really mean the world to me. Hope you enjoy and subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode.